Okay, I'm going to address this one here. So we have stuff like Manchurian Candidate. This, you know, implanted raccoon swastika sculpture. Washington Park, 20th and Washington. So I looked at 20th and Washington and Vancouver. Image of shaking something up like an... Er so in this PBS special, they were talking about how life may have formed on Earth. And they talked about the early chemical makeup of what was going on on planet Earth. And that there were, you know, um, life sort of maybe began with amino acids. Amino acid chains linking together or something like that. And so they tried to imitate it with a model in which these magnetic pieces were all stuck in a on a table that shakes and that sh table shakes and the models the magnetic pieces start sticking together and forming shapes they were forming specific shapes globes or something like that when i was about in third grade i thought that um i would read the bible and I read Genesis and I read Exodus. I think that's about as far as I got. But Genesis is a very long chapter, but I was particularly fascinated with the idea of how God supposedly created life by taking a ball of clay and blowing into it. That was my understanding of how God created man. So I tried to do that. I took modeling clay and made like a little ball and maybe like, I don't know, put some stuff inside of it or something like that and then put a hole into it and tried to blow into it and create life. <laughs> I was probably in third grade. It didn't really work. But I thought of that when I was reading about Jack Parsons, another rocket scientist. So it looks like there's a bunch of stuff that's just recently published about him online. And one of the things I read, I don't know where it is right now, was this idea of him trying to conjure up life or trying to he tried to conjure up a wife and he was into satanism and black magic and stuff um and this wired article about him it says that he was kind of kicked out of the rocket lab for unorthodox and unsafe methods where does that sense there it is unorthodox and unsafe working methods i find it interesting that they put that period outside of the quotation marks is that really just a typo because in american english that wouldn't be correct you would have the period on the inside wouldn't you i think you would um i notice people do that sometimes with periods to um signify I think it signifies I think that when they put extra spaces around periods it signifies uh, the period signifies us and putting us into space in other words putting space around us maybe that is a correct thing that I'm just unaware of but I don't think it is and you can see well here it's not done here this is this is normal but I think anyway so that's kind of weird um so he was a he was into Satanism and he was into weird sex orgy stuff and stuff like that. And it seems like there's a renewed interest in him. This is from 2014. I had never heard of him before. I had heard of other people like Brenner Von Braun and stuff, but I had never heard of Jack Parsons. And I first heard about him from this Lennon Claypool delirium song called Blood and Rockets. Right? Is that the name of the song that I'm thinking of? Or is that the album? And that's what an interesting name, isn't it? Blood and Rockets. It shows the idea of um, family links to rocket science, possibly. Yeah, so the actual song name is Blood and Rockets Movement One Saga of Jack Parsons. So, according to stuff that I've read, they tried to write him out of history because he was a Satanist. I'm not sure why the Nazi stuff was cool and the Satanic stuff wasn't. But I think that they somehow 
you know, they were able to make guys like Werner von Braun. Maybe there's, you know, maybe it has to do with they could say that the Nazis were just stuck in, you know, a situation that had to do with the time and place that they were from. Whereas someone like Jack Parsons, it's harder to make an excuse for him. But anyway, what I was, well, the whole reason why I came back to this is it seemed like one of the things that he had done was actually try to create life. That was one of the things he was interested in doing was actually like conjuring up life. And when I read about that, wherever it was that I read about it, I thought that's weird because, because of the stuff that I had done as a child seemed linked to that. There's apparently some controversy as to whether he actually was quote-unquote written out of history. I certainly hadn't heard of him, but it's not that I've studied the history of NASA that much. Werner von Braun felt he had been written out, why he had been wiped from history. Um, Quotes like the government doesn't really want any people with quirkiness. I don't think that's correct. I think that they, but they're hiding a lot of this quirkiness. That's my problem with it is. The falseness. I mean, I've literally been trafficked by hospitals and police. I've actually had police spying on me naked, making me probably do things. You know, come on. You want to say the government doesn't want people with quirkiness? What do you call it then? It's way beyond quirkiness. It's criminal behavior. It's just because it's endorsed through some weird old system doesn't make it any less heinous from my perspective. So I'm, I'm about had it with, you know, these people that look really good on TV. And then as soon as the door shuts, they're back in the back room involved in who knows what. When I was in third grade, I tried to do this thing. And anyway, it makes me think that I was made to do this through frequency-based mind control. Like I was made to do a lot of things through frequency-based mind control. And, you know, if, if when I had tried to fix this, somebody had tried to help me fix it, like police, as opposed to trying to lock me up and or hurt and or kill me, I think I would have had a different point of view about it by now.